I received an email request from uh, somebody asking me if I could actually sort of show how you can give a photograph a bent look. So I've actually got this picture here and this guy, that's how you give it a bent look. You hold it in this hand here, there and there's a bent look. All right, it's a poster, but it could be a photograph as well. More seriously though, let's take a look at bending this picture. First of all, we need to turn it into a photographic looking picture. In other words, we want to put a white framework around this. Using Command J, Control J, we're going to duplicate the background layer. Next, we're going to make a selection around the outside using Command A or Control A. There's our selection. Just coming across to the toolbox, make sure you've got the default colors. Press D on the keyboard. Now press X. We'll put white as the foreground color. If we go to the edit menu, we're going to drop down to stroke. Because we set white as the foreground color, it is there, it comes in. If you need to change it though, don't worry, you can just click in the box, that'll open the color picker, and you can select the color for yourself, namely white. Usually with a stroke border, we go around about the, I don't know, three, four, perhaps even eight pixels. So uh, this is where you'll need to experiment. It will dep depend on the file size of the document you're working with. But I'm going to go for 50 with this particular one. Now the other important thing is make sure location is set to inside. That is important. So make sure the location is set to inside. In other words, you will see the 50 pixels of white will be adding. Click OK to that and through it's going to go. Job done. So it's Command D, Control D. There is our photograph looking picture. Zooming out to this area here, because I just want to give ourselves a little bit more space around the image. We're going to increase the, the sort of the document size as well, the working size. We're going to drag the crop tool over the picture, coming down to the bottom grab handle. Now press the Alt or the Option key. Hold down that Alt or Option key. Drag it out. You'll notice the top and the bottom are coming out equally. Coming to the side, still holding down that Alt or Option key, dragging it out. That looks pretty good there pressing enter or return it takes on the background color in this case it's black and it adds it even though we're working on layer one it adds it to the background layer here if i just switch this on and off you can see there it is with and without our white framework right clicking on the background layer i want to fill this with 50 percent gray it's just going to help us see what's going on when we come to working on the rest of the picture so i'm going to use a nifty shortcut and the nifty shortcut is shift and backspace that shift and backspace on a pc it is shift delete on a mac that is shift and delete on a mac which opens the fill dialog box and this is where you can select foreground background you can select the color dropping down 50 percent gray click ok to that or just press enter on the keyboard job done right come into layer one using Command J or Control J to duplicate this layer. I'm going to drop down to layer one here and we're just going to double click and I'm going to call this shadow because that's what it's going to become. Switching layer one off, otherwise you won't see what we're doing to this layer here. And we're simply going to press Command or Control, click on the thumbnail. You'll notice as soon as I press that Command or Control, you get a square on the back of your cursor, clicking down, there it is. We've selected this. Now I'm going to use another nifty shortcut. I'm going to apply the background color here, black, to this particular layer. So we're going to fill it with black. That is Command and it is Delete. That's Command and Delete. It is Control and Backspace. Control and Backspace fills this with black. Command D, Control D to deselect. Right, come into layer one copy. Now. For this to work, there's several different ways we're going to do it, but I want just to put a sort of a fold down the center of this. I just want to give it one sort of bend, as it were. We need to go to the edit menu. We're going to drop down to transform. We're going to go to sort of clockwise will be pretty good. And you notice we just flip that around. Job done. Filter, distort, shear. Now with shear, when this opens, you can see the way it's working with the picture here, and you've got the shear coming through the side there. Just click on this. If you lift it up, you're going to curve it from the sort of sides up. If you drop it like that, you're going to sort of put it so the two edges are going to be up. You only need to do a very small amount. Don't take it all the way down. The distortion looks uh, not very good. Bringing it up like this, you can also change the sizes. Just click down, pull them up 
pull them down and I'll leave it up to you but you play with it to your heart's content edit transform rotate 90 degrees clockwise or we'll spin it back around so there it is it has arrived and you can see it's uh, looking pretty sort of bent in the middle do you see what I mean now but you only need a small amount right to give a little bit of a lighten effect through the center we're simply going to come to our layer here what we'll call our photo layer so that's our photo I'm going to press command or control again on the thumbnail that puts on the selection there it is we've got our selection there and we're going to put in a new empty layer coming across I've got white as the foreground color we're going to come up we're going to select the gradient tool yes my favorite tool but not the radial this time we're going to change it to the reflective gradient but once again if you come to this little window click on this make sure you are using the foreground through to transparent so make sure you're using foreground through to transparent click OK to that coming into the picture we've made the selection so this is going to hold the gradient inside this area here I'm going to come to that area looks pretty good just drawing it across releasing it through goes our reflection not exactly where I wanted to put it so I'm not going to worry particularly I'm going to use command D or control D to get rid of my sort of selection there next we're going to use the shortcut for the gradient tool which is command T control T or it's under the edit free transform pulling this into that area there would be better and perhaps even give it just a very slight sort of angle that looks good like that you'll notice the way it's sticking out over the edge don't worry bring your cursor inside right click head down for warp now with warp we can just tuck this in like that so it's sort of just on the area of the photograph that looks pretty good just handy for doing this sort of thing the reflection itself looks a little bit sort of heavy at the moment I'm just going to press enter or return to apply that don't worry next job oh, see, I haven't done a very good job on the top there so it's just command T control T and if I just right click for warp again you can see how quickly and easily we can do that just lifting it up and a bit on the bottom as well I've missed there you obviously weren't keeping an eye on me you should have told me thank you very much enter or return job done now come to the, the opacity it's the opacity we're going to drop this down and as we drop the opacity down it's that area there it's in quite low numbers it just gives that sort of there it is a bit more of a bent look to it down into that area what we got we have got 42 percent looks pretty good dropping down to our extremely realistic looking shadow I'm going to press V on the keyboard which will bring up the move tool so we can now move our realistic looking shadow around so it's in that area like that filter blur Gaussian blur or Gaussian whatever you want to call it but call it something just pull it out to it begins to look there just the edges falling off that looks pretty good click OK right next job the move tool just dropping it down a little bit it's quite like the way that's looking there don't forget command T puts the transform tool around that that's command or control T for the transform tool bring your cursor inside right click we can go again to warp this will allow us just to be able to tuck things in like this perhaps pull the corner out a little bit more like that and just give a bit more of a sort of realistic looking drop shadow to it something like that looks pretty good yeah I'm rushing because I'm trying to fit it in with the time allowed for my video uploads load so through that goes that looks pretty good like that dropping down the opacity again just to blend it in and so there it is that's giving your picture a sort of a bent look for want of a better word just coming through going like that cropping it down to size we don't need all that uh, work surface you can change the background color to whatever you want but there it is that's bending a picture in the members area on my website we take it a stage further we actually sort of bend the picture twice we apply this background as well and uh, you know you can find the full video for this in my members area on my website so pay that a visit 
love to see you there. Any questions, any comments, uh, please feel free to contact me. You can do so via my website. But until the next time, it's happy imaging and take care.